Thanks for joining us at the Sennheiser Paste Interactive Studio Lounge. I'm here with Genova Chin of That Game Company, the designer of Journey and Flower and Flow. Mm -hmm. How's it going, Genova? It's great. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, thanks for coming by. So I was thinking about Journey. It came out almost exactly a year ago now. Yeah. So how's the last year been for you? <laughs> well, uh, that, that was a roller coaster ride that for the last year. You know, um, you know, there's ups and downs, and right now I, it's just almost back to normal that we're working our new games right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us anything about the new game yet, or? Uh, it is too early to say anything that uh, that I can guarantee will be in the end game. So I, I'm going to hold on that for now. Okay. Yeah. So you've mentioned in the past that uh, one of your aims with the journey and with making games is to provoke an emotional response in mm -hmm. the player. Um, how do you think games as a medium are capable of doing that in ways that other media can't? Well, it's, I mean, sure, I mean, games can do a lot of things that other traditional medium can't, uh, but that's, that's not really how I approach games. <laughs> uh, but, you know, for example, if you look at early arcade games, why are these games so unique? And they focus on creating a, a sense of accomplishment. You know, you play Tetris, you get better over to time, and you get better and better, you, def you get a higher score, you feel you've achieved something, right? And you can watch a film, you can watch a character that, you know, achieved something in the start, but that's not you. That's not you who just have that real feeling of you just become better at something. And I think that's what games is really good at. Um, but basically, you know, the difference between games and the movies is like you are the race car driver, right? In a Formula One or a NASCAR, right? And you're driving it at a very high speed. You're making the decisions. The adrenaline rushes through you. And, but if you're watching a film, it's like a camera mounted on top of the driver's helmet. You're just watching the driver driving it. It's very different. Of course, you get thrill as well, but you're not there. You're not living it. And, and that's what game is good at. Okay. So you mentioned uh, achieving something in the old arcade games. Now, with a game like Journey, what is the achievement when you play Journey? Well, see, when we work on Journey, we don't focus on achievement. Because achievement as emotion has been done so many times in the past that, you know, I think it's just not a new emotion. Um, the reason we approach games um, on feeling is that I, I believe that it, if you look at any entertainment industry, like music or movie or even novels, right, they have these different genres. Different, each, each genre is kind of catered towards a, a unique crowd of people with a unique emotional content. Uh, for example, there's horror films, which I don't like, but a lot of people love horror film. And then there's science fiction, right? And then on the other end, there's like, comic, you know, romantic comedy, right? Uh, uh, so there's various feelings di directed towards uh, a wide variety of audience. But right now in games, uh, there are a lot of equivalent of action adventure, right? Uh, or maybe horror or thriller, but there's not enough emotions that's about relaxation, about feel good, right? About drama, about love. Um, so I think because of the missing uh, components, I think game industry is still not very mature. It's not very healthy because it's only kind of great for a certain audience. Um, so when we approach game, particularly like for Journey, for example, most of the online games are about empowerment, you know, making people feel uh, free and feel they are, they are empowered to do anything they want. Um, so <laughs> the, the interaction between players online, you know, is like two super-powered beings, like, well, what can they do between each other? Well, they, they want to see who is more powerful, who is better, who is stronger. Um, and I wanted to create an emotion between the two online players that is not about who's better, but helping each other and trusting each other and having a meaningful emotional connection. And that's what, what really social is. So in a way, I'm trying to make a social game. Uh, and that's the emotion I'm focusing on. It has nothing to do with accomplishment whatsoever. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned <laughs> that the medium is 
at the moment, a lot of action adventure, a lot of thrillers. It's not particularly mature at the moment. Do you see signs that gaming is maturing? Do you feel hopeful about its future in that regard? <laughs> of course. I mean, the fact uh, Journey has well out this industry award, you know, it's, it's from the peers who work in the gaming industry that they decided Journey is important. I think that's a, that's a great sign that uh, you know, people are looking for something different and they want something deeper and, and appeal to uh, you know, a, a more mature audience right now. Okay. So Journey, it, it's known for having a very good score from Awesome Once Worry. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also known for being a co-op game where you can't communicate. There's no sound between you and your partner. So mm -hmm. when you're building a game and your focus is the emotional context or reaction for the player, how does sound play into that? Well, uh, I think George Lucas said, uh, you know, music is more than half of the, the film. Uh, I if I'm wrong, maybe that's Steven Spielberg. I think it's George Lucas. Um, but I think um, for video games, depending on the focus, right, if you, you just focus on the sense of accomplishment, maybe you don't need that much of music or sound. But for me, because the focus is on emotion, uh, I think music and sound is extremely important. It's probably 70% of where the emotion comes from. Uh, and the rest of it, like the design and the visual, are just there to support that music to, to make you feel something. Um, <coughs> so uh, TGC has a tradition of implementing interactive music and sound systems that it, you know, it's not just as great music, but the music evolve uh, and reflect on the state of the game and the input from the player. Uh, in Journey, uh, in order to make people feel comfortable with each other and feel a sense of romantic a ro romance between the two players, we actually designed the music uh, to, um, you know, when, based on proximity between the player, there will be additional flavors of music coming in. Like there's a particular instrument, like a harp, assigned just for the other player. You know, if the other player is not around, you're never going to hear the harp. Uh, so, so when the other player shows up, it's, you know, that, that, that harp is such a nice kind of a, like twinkling icing on the top. It just feels so great to just be next with someone. Um, and the sound effect as well. So the player can um, sing these different notes. Uh, we actually have to arrange uh, the notes so that based on where the music is, we'll pick a particular collection, uh, selection of the notes that doesn't go against the music, right? So no matter when you, you make a, sh a sing singing, it always works great with the background music and it's always in harmony. Uh, and the harmony is very important because early on we do not uh, really pay attention to how sound and music mix. When the other players start to, to sing a, a, the wrong note, it feels really disturbing. Uh, so you can see like all these little tension went in just to create a, you know, a, a harmonious, uh, peaceful uh, audio experience you know, as the player play with each other. All right. So Journey was uh, the third game in your three-game deal with Sony. So mm -hmm. now that game company, you're sort of a free agent. You're able to do what you want for what systems you want. How does that feel? Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess liberation. <laughs> uh, but to be honest, I think uh, when we work with Sony, the, the experience is very pleasant in terms of creative um, ownership. Like Sony is very supportive and they are very hands off from our projects. So I always felt like, you know, I'm just running all the design. You know, everybody's in TGC determining what the game's supposed to be. And Sony is just to be a support role, helping us to make it the best. And so in terms of creatively, I think there's n almost no difference, except now uh, I don't have to answer my, you know, fan mail saying, hey, you know, I'm sorry, we can't port Journey to your platform. You know, a lot of people don't have PlayStation 3, and so they want to try it out. Um, so they were asking us, to, well, are we going to port it to 360 or PC or even like iOS uh, platform? Um, but we just can't do it. Uh, now, with our own funding, you know, we can determine which platform we want to support. Uh, yeah. So are you looking at multi-console, multi-platform games for, from here on out? 
Um, definitely, I want the people who really want to play our game to have easy access to them. Yeah. Yeah. How does it feel to work on a game as long as you work on games and then have it come out and have only a small slice of the audience be able to actually play it? Well, it doesn't feel good when, you know, like most of the people you talk to, they're like, oh, I have a 360. Right. I'm not going to buy a PS3 for this, you know, <laughs> and then they're not going to play the, the game whatsoever. Oh. And, and knowing, I mean, so far we've had 900 emails uh, from people who really love Journey and they sent emails to us to tell a story like how they play with the game. I mean, I, I was convinced that Journey is going <laughs> to, it's a game that has a lot of soul in it. And it can bring the player something positive. And knowing that it's going to be good for them, but they don't have access to the game, yeah, it, it, it's, it's sad. <laughs> also, how does it feel to work on games as serene and thoughtful as Journey and Flower? And then you go to E3 or other industry events, and you just see nonstop heads exploding and like dubstep blasting. Mm -hmm. like, how do you feel about the industry that you're working in right now? Well, it's actually really hard to work on TGC games. Uh, I mean, it, particularly because these are very serious, you know, like games that, you know, after you work on a little bit, it's just kind of stressed out. It's like every day, just, you know. Uh, and so we, we will actually have these game jams just to, you know, like we make a game on the side in a day or two, just to cleanse people's uh, palate. And when we make a game jam, it's the exact what the industry is. It's a lot of violence, <laughs> blood, and explosions, but there's a lot of fun, you know? Yeah. It's, it's less serious, it's I think. Working out your frustrations. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, uh, I think it's easier to make fun games and, you know, kind of, violent games is almost like kind of uh, primal uh, and going through flower and journey I mean I know how difficult it is to make these games so I I don't think most people should <laughs> make these type of games <laughs> it's very stressful yeah all right um, I feel like that's probably been about 15 minutes uh, so yeah thanks again for coming by mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I um, right. hope you have a good South by Southwest and a good trip home. And Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Right.